Okay, so we are about to interview Victor Karlström, and Victor Karlström is a whistleblower from Sweden that has filed a federal uh, action in the Southern District of New York. And so let's hear what Victor has to say. Tjena, hur står det till? Det var länge sedan jag fick prata svenska. Ja. So, uh, my Swedish... My Swedish is... Do you start the interview? Yes, let's start. Uh, my Swedish yes. is, is pretty bad these days. But, uh, but you know, that's one of those things that you and I have in common. Obviously. Yeah, this is also the second time I see you. Yes, that's right. You, well, yeah. the first time I saw you was in your hotel room. And then I saw you a little bit later at uh, LAX. And uh, we should talk about that because, you know. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, happy to discuss it. And I'm uh, very grateful for uh, your, your brave uh, what you did, it was very, yeah, I think uh, literally you saved my life that day. Uh, what do you think? Well, I think you were definitely in danger. And when I when I showed up at the hotel and I, and I looked around, you know, there were some things about that that made me feel uncomfortable immediately. And one of them was, you know, the room that you were in. And, you know, without really talking too much about, you know, the bodyguards or what have you, you know, usually you don't have a security detail that puts you in a room with a sliding glass door okay, that... but, but it was we were arriving so late the day before because uh, we were escorted to that hotel and it was like a a, a fully booked hotel so I, I don't they did the best of the situation okay but that made but, me but... feel uncomfortable for immediately and then when i looked out that sliding glass door i saw these two men standing there smoking didn't really think much yeah, of it. Yeah, but you were noticed on when you were arrived. Oh, yeah. Because they've been standing there for 45 minutes or something. Yeah, yeah. No, the entire time we were there, they were they were smoking. And nobody, nobody smokes for like, you know, 30, 45 minutes. They just don't do it. You know, somebody goes they, out, they have their cigarette. Not with, uh, with sunglasses and, uh, and, a, and a cap and uh, no luggage and watching our, our room. Oh, yeah. No, exactly. So the entire time and, we were in the room... And I got a chance to read through, you know, the, at least the first half of the complaint in it, whatever form it was in back then. And I realized that this was like serious business and about serious yeah. money. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, but the day before that, uh, we, I, I had been, uh, we were uh, escorted to that place the, the day before on the evening. And uh, LAPD, I, I'm... Uh, very grateful because they did a tremendous job the day before yeah. at the, 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 the Dream Hotel in Los Angeles uh, where they uh, arrived and uh, the two people who was monitoring, filming and was, um, yeah, the security firm after they reviewed all the security cams on these people, they were pretty sure that it would be a shootout that day uh, uh, if they wasn't around me. But they was t next to me both all the time and they are very heavy armed. So if somebody starts to open fire, they will get shot. So it will be crazy. And it was up on the highlight room. It's like one of the most popular places in Los Angeles. So it, it will be a big uh, scene. Yeah. But, but also these people, uh, yeah. And for uh, those, was, those people that are but, watching. But when, when they were escorting me out from a uh, dream, when, when after they reviewed the security cams for the last days and, 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 and saw these people uh, uh, always try to watching and come close to me all the time, they uh, they was closing down the, the street outside when they drove me away. So they, they, there was like... Uh, they did a tremendous job. Absolutely. And the police and, and did also, a tremendous also, job. I, I, when I was on the LAX, when, yes. yeah, you can explain what happened. I yeah. don't need to explain. Well, and, and for, for those who don't know uh, Victor, Victor has just filed a lawsuit in federal court. And I'll include a link to the complaint so that anybody that wants to read the complaint can read it. And this yeah, is... Yeah, uh, we've been working. Yeah, we've been working since May with the two of the 
best lawyers, uh, lawyer firms in New York. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I started in May with Lauren Schoenbach and we spent uh, yeah, to this day, over a thousand hours and uh, going through all the documents, uh, thousands of documents, proof, uh, account statements, you name it, enormous amount of information. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they, uh, yeah, two days ago, they, two, yeah, almost two days ago, they filed it in court, so it just happened. And the Southern District of New York, because the events is happening in Southern District of New York, most of it. So uh, that's why uh, we, we, we file it there. So, uh, yeah, they have done a tremendous job. And also, it's important to know that everything is a complaint is uh, we can prove with 100% fact with uh, documented proof. So it's like uh, there is like no speculation or like no, no, um, yeah, because, uh, um, they, 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 you, you, yeah, the lawyers are vo- extremely important. They always say if you don't have the documents, proof, account statement, transaction, it never happened. Yeah. Or recorded the tra- recorded conversations and everything. So that's why they have going through it. That's why they've spent over thousands of hours to go through everything. And before they put the name on it and, and, and everything, they make sure that everything is 100% correct. Yeah. Well, and yeah, so now it's fine. Then now it's my my yeah. yeah. So the case is now filed, which you know should give you at least some comfort. When I saw you last, you know, I the last time I saw you, you were at LAX, and we should talk about the events that led up to that because uh, you know at the hotel, I felt very uncomfortable, and I felt like both of our lives were in danger. And, um, you know, we, we needed to get out of there, which we did do. And so the way this... Yeah, even... they, were, they, were, they were on the way to strike. It was like that. Uh, but it was become so obvious. Yeah, you can explain when we were leaving what was happening. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll start out. I get a phone call and I, I was talking to um, somebody else. And so the phone rolled over to voicemail and I called back. And I, I noticed that the number was for the Hilton. And so the, about 10 minutes later, Victor calls me again. And I say, hey, you're staying local at the Hilton. Why don't I come down and see you? So I went to Victor's hotel room. And when I knocked on his door, immediately a security guard came out and said, hey, can I help you? I told him who I was. He said, oh, I'm expecting you. He knocked on the door. Victor answered. And in I went. And when I went in, I went right over to the sliding glass door and I looked out and I'd seen these two gentlemen that were staring at the room before. And I just noticed that, okay, they're kind of looking at this room, which, you know, made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But then we kind of started our meeting. Victor let me read the uh, complaint off of his computer. And so I quickly read through as much of it as I could. And then, you know, he he really kind of wanted to move on in the conversation. And so, you know, I kind of stopped reading the complaint and we talked. And over the course of the next few minutes, I, I really asked him, I said, hey, do you feel safe here? And he said, no, I don't. And I pointed out these two men that were outside and said, look, these guys have been watching your room. And by then, probably 25, 30 minutes had transpired and we devised a plan that we were gonna get out of there. And so he packed up his stuff quickly and he had, he had uh, two massive suitcases and three kind of smaller bags. And he grabbed the three smaller bags. I grabbed the two big suitcases, they're on wheels. And we rolled them out into the hallway and the bodyguard said, hey, wh- what's going on? And we said, hey, we're going into the lobby. So we took the elevator. Yeah, he was coming up, and we had a discussion about these guys in the elevator, and he was very aware of them. He was aware of them. He said, yes, he had seen them. He didn't know who they were, but uh, clearly he he also was monitoring those guys. And so we get down to the lobby, and we see the shuttle is in the driveway. And we decide we're going to get on that shuttle. And, and you can say it's a very big hotel. Hilton is very crowded. Yeah, it's very crowded. There's a lot of people yeah. around. Yeah. There's the shuttle that's going off to the airport. This hotel is down by the airport. And so we get on the shuttle. And just as the shuttle's about to pull away, the two guys that were watching us 
from the garden looking at uh, Victor's hotel room get on the shuttle and they have no baggage no luggage whatsoever uh, one of them and has, sunglasses yeah dark sunglasses what have you I mean it's it's the worst and possible scenario and yeah. so you know they sit at the back of the bus I'm in between Victor and them and I immediately start engaging with them like uh, you know Victor said before that I distracted them which is what I did do and Victor pressures the bus driver to make an unscheduled stop. He didn't feel comfortable doing it, but Victor wasn't going to take no for an answer. And so he no. stopped. And this was Terminal and 1. Yeah. This was Terminal 1 at the airport. And uh, Victor gets off with his three bags. And asks but me, I only took one bag with me. The bag with the cash. And was running with that bag. Okay. So the two big yeah. bags I took... And yeah, but then was when the police was there. Yeah, but I anyway, I took those. And when I got off the bus, it took me a few minutes to get those bags out. But that also provided Victor with a chance to get away. And so, yeah, yeah. I so, thought when, when you told when I told you to like, uh, when we were discussing that you start to talk to them and like distract them. Yes. And and I was going to get off the bus when yeah. I was standing there, like getting the driver to stop. Uh, I was pretty much sure they will. Uh, I was feeling like like this. Now they will. If they shoot, they have to shoot now. Yeah. And but I also know I I, I always have uh, the the body vest on me, so the, the arm vest. So I know if they hit my back, it's okay. If they hit my arms, my legs, it's okay. But if they hit my head, of course, it's gone. But I, I as soon as he stopped and I was running out of the bus into the terminal and then I was uh, now it was something yeah yeah so and and I was in between you and them so if they would have shot you they would have shot me I mean that's that's what would have happened and uh you know they would have had to shoot through me to get to you and yeah so, well that's why I said like it was uh it, yeah you did uh, I'm I'm uh, extremely thankful uh, very and also it's but yeah it was very brave to act but because many many people would go on the other direction yeah well so you so, did a very brave uh, because, yeah what do you think to be honest were they going to what do you think well i obviously they they meant you harm there's no question in my mind about that and so while I, I grabbed those two huge bags and I got them off the, uh, the shuttle and then the shuttle went on and those guys stayed in the shuttle and I, I watched for a minute or so to make sure that they didn't stop and those guys didn't get out. And so once I shot, saw the shuttle was leaving, I felt pretty comfortable that I could look around and I looked around, I couldn't find Victor. And so I thought, no, okay. But I, I never heard this before because I never talked about it. Because then I was in by the because I was running into the airport and like, where's the cops? Yeah. Then I was running to, to the security where you're going to, to go to, to the security. And I was like, call the cops because I didn't know if they were after me. I didn't know what was happening because I didn't look back. When the door was open, I just took the bag and was running. Yeah. And, and yeah, but then the cops come and they, I explain the situation. I showed my paper, my asylum paper, and explain the, the 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 police report from the day before that was having from the LAPD. Yeah. So they were calling to every LAPD and was confirming, and they had sent it to the the heavy crime unit from the day before, and uh, then they realized the the, the the seriosity about the situation. Yeah. So, so and then they wanted to interview you. I don't know what you were talking about, but uh, after they interviewed you, it's uh, they were even coming more cops. We have we have the armed cops. Yeah. Well, and one guy around with a dog. What they wanted to find out from me was, you know, kind of how serious this was. I told them that I had read, you know, part of the complaint and that it involved some big names and it was big money, and that I did feel that your life was in danger. And once I kind of calmed them down, I think that kind of smoothed things out because I talked to them on the telephone first, and then I talked to them in person when I was dropping your bags off to you. And to kind of just back up a little bit in the story, when I got off, 
that shuttle I, and I couldn't find you, I looked and I saw the taxi cabs and this was before they changed the whole configuration at LAX. And so I ran over to the taxi cab and I found one that would take me back to the hotel where I could pick up my car. And so I grabbed the bags, I put them in the car. You uh, first talked to me and said, hey, I'm gonna tell you who to leave the bags with. And then you called back and you said, hey, I actually need the bags. And so, yeah, because the police was come, escorted me to you. Yeah. And then they interviewed you. Yes. But then after they meet you, you the more they come like heavy arm guys. Uh, with the one with the dog and and uh, yeah they were escorting me to 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 purchase a ticket yeah and then they escorted me through the security to the gate and they were standing yeah with, they were with me till I was leaving but then the next situation come because they didn't want me to uh, to go direct flight to New York after yeah. they had talked to like the, the heavy crime unit so they advised me to go to Vegas. Yeah. And stay in Vegas uh, to I have sort of the situation in New York. So uh, it was, um, yeah, so it was, uh, my lawyers in New York was working then with uh, the U.S. attorney yeah. in South District of New York and the prosecutors. And uh, they were, yeah, preparing for me for a ride. So I was waiting in Vegas for them to, yeah. Be ready, and then when I was arrived in New York, I went directly to the U.S. attorney and uh, met with the prosecutors and FBI. And uh, yeah, it was um, yeah. So, what uh, other things? I'm very grateful for the U.S. authorities because they 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 are yeah they are very professional and they take everything very seriously. And they, yeah, they are yeah. Well, and we really have, can't I, say I, enough. I have my life to thank for Trump. We can't really say enough to thank the authorities that put their lives on the line every single day to kind of yeah, keep us safe. Yeah, they are doing tremendous job. It's like yeah, uh, and so and, and I see them in action now, and it's like they they are yeah, they are the best. This situation was uh, you know very tense when when I was there, and you know of of course. You know, I'm grateful that, uh, you know, we kind of helped each other to make it through because I think both of our lives were in danger at that point at the hotel. And yeah, I, to be honest, if you hadn't come, I don't know if how it would be played out because uh, uh, then I only had one bodyguard with me. Of course, he had his guns, but uh, it was like uh, we were down to one because of the incident that happened the day after. And uh, after, so it was like, yeah, uh, yeah, you did. Uh, uh, without you, it would be me and the body or these two guys. It was like, uh, yeah. And those two yeah. guys, if if uh, they, you know, they had a satchel. I'm not sure what was in it, but let's say that they were heavily armed. It wouldn't have taken them too much to shoot through that sliding glass door window, you know, kill both of you guys, and then run down the stairs and flee into the night. And yeah, because they had sunglasses, they had a cap. It was like pretty much impossible to. But there's, you know, this was not the first incident. It it was the, the third incident. Uh, there's been three before, but uh, two in New York and one in in Dubai. But the, you have this uh, problem people don't take seriously that other countries send in agents to other countries and kill people. Yeah. You see it all the time. It happens in London. It happens five, six times in London last year. You have uh, last year in Istanbul, uh, Saudi was sending in 15 guys and killed Jamal. And the, 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 the crown prince in Saudi admit that the, he was responsible for the killing. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, and, and you have had the same thing happen in Dubai. Mossad was sending in the. 12 people, I think, to kill the, this uh, uh, Palestinian guy many years ago. But you, you see a development that is uh, very scary. And especially also when they have the intelligence uh, uh, communications software, like the Pegasus they use. Uh, they use it on Jamal in Istanbul. Uh, it's, uh, Sweden have access to it. That's why... Yeah, so I have a yeah, I change my electronics pretty much every second week. Yeah, 
and, and also have to change number all the time and and uh, yeah so it's yeah it's it's it's, it's, a, it's always a chase so what can you tell uh, the viewers about your case things that you think they should know about and maybe try and put it into a nutshell as to what your case is about uh, no uh, the, 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 he just file. So you, we, I have the event. You are the first because you, the thing you did, you are the first. Uh, I'm going to talk with me at your first tomorrow. And then my the, 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 the PR agency, my lawyers have uh, sent me to gonna start tomorrow also talking to me. At so this is not uh, uh, like uh, news yet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I saw that there was any of the press release. Uh, I think... Uh, last evening right yeah last evening for sure and that press yeah, release no, no, last evening the time is two two in the night here now so it's uh, yeah. last evening is four or five hours ago yeah and uh, so it's just it's just been, been public but the, the, there is like uh, the people we sue and we bring to court will not get away with this it's impossible yeah and and it's like it's 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 we will now they will be get served, and then they would have to stand in front of the jury. Maybe it takes a year and one and a half year, yeah. but they will not get away with this. Yes, because everything in their complaint we have bulletproof proof on, and that is crimes. And yes. it's even conspiracy to murder in the United States. Yeah. So it's like uh, there is impossible, and then, then it, this is a civil case. Then it will be a criminal case. Also, so so the, the, there is two cases, but this is the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so and it's uh, yeah, they, they are this, Sweden have become one of the most corrupt countries in the world, and it's be possible because uh, Sweden have had the reputation to be an honest country and a trusted country, and you have this old expression where you say in the commerce uh, what do you say in the commerce see the dangerous sharks swim yes you say that here yeah yeah and, and i would say pretty much about sweden they have developed this extreme corruption where it is like you have today like four close friends and partners even if you have five with a with a director general for the economic police but you have like the SCC director general Tidin, his best friend with the director general for Swedbank the director general for pensions and you see is the best friend with, in the same friendship and then you have the director general for tax agency and you have the director general for the economic police so, and who's going to invest? And they just just keep stealing all this money yeah. from the system and from the pe from the people, and it's like they ship out billions. Yeah. And 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 nobody can disclose it because they the SEC should investigate Swedbank and Folksam. And when the SEC are into the fraud and the scam, of course that will never happen. The other part that can disclose is the tax agency. But when the head of the tax agency, who U.S. authorities know very well, Catherine Westley Palm, I have had so many questions about her. And they, yeah, she's uh, because she was the head of pensions agency before, who have over one three in other management. So she's been doing this for a long time. Uh, but uh, and then you have her, who she can disclose it, but of course, when she's in the fraud, she will never disclose it. Then you have the economic police, who is a very close friend to this, to, to all others. It's like it's it's become like a circle where they're like stealing the the citizen of Sweden's money. Yeah, it's insane. And I was on the inside and saw all this and was. Uh, well, yeah, I was working on the inside. I was, well, I was the Swedish best financial broker for over ten years, but I, I was also in 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 the top of European financial services for over fourteen years. Uh, so, and and did a lot of business uh, in Europe, in Luxembourg, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, with banks and clients. So, 
I'm like a professional and saw all this, and it it's disgusting. Yes, that's the right word. It's disgusting. Yes. So it would be. I would say it would be a. a, a it would be a very, a very good trial for the Swedish people, uh, and uh, also it would be. Yes, it would, it would be very. Uh, my lawyers say that the only way out for them is to kill you. Laura and Sean Mark say that all the time. Well, let's. Josh, my own, my, what do you say? Let's hope that that doesn't happen. Let's do everything we can to make sure that you stay safe. Yeah, I have a very good security and around me, but uh, Josh say, "Why are you alive?" That's his repeating question when he goes through all the documents, transactions. Why are you alive? He asked me. He has asked me that question all the time. And it's. Uh, but but, but uh, to be honest, I I, I have calculated that. I may not survive this court to for one two years. So I have last month putting up a trust in Cyprus, and I had deposit two million US dollar in that trust. And if I get killed today, tomorrow, next week, next month, whatever, this trust will investigate my murder and bring the people to court prosecute it and see so everybody involves get the the the, the penalty for, for the murder because i will not tolerate the new jamal happening yes i will not tolerate that that will not happen to me so i have calculated that scenario so if they, they this if they shoot me it will not end any of the outcome scenario more than they will go in for jail for murder today is conspiracy to murder so that's, but it's, it's the same, it's lifetime in prison we're talking about anyway, so uh, it's, uh, yeah. But but I would love to meet you again and, and, and give you a, a hug for what you did in, uh, in Los Angeles. Well, I, I'm sure I will see you soon. And, uh, you know, we're not going to disclose anything about where you're at or, you know, any of that. Let's uh, Let's figure out a good time to actually meet face to face again. And in the meantime, yes. we can, you know, go through. I can say I, I, I think I'm the most watched guy in, in uh, by U.S. intelligence service in, in, uh, in United States right now. So I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, uh, I'm not afraid. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, also have I actually feel and, comfortable. And, and we have a lot of guns. Yeah. I have noticed that when I came to the U.S. that the, we, everybody has a lot of guns. Exactly. And that's why the My U.S. is safe for you. My bodyguards have three guns, and they have an yeah. automatic weapon, and they have shotguns, and they have everything. So it's, yeah. uh, I think it's almost too much guns. Yeah. But, uh, but sometimes, you know, you need protection, and you need people that have guns to protect you. I think I was asking you that when we were going to go from Hilton, where you you have a gun, right? Yeah, and I didn't did not have a gun. Yeah, I did not have a gun. And no, but I didn't ask you that. You did ask me that, yeah. And in California, yeah. you know, carrying a gun without a permit is a real bad problem. And uh, I'm oh, sure New York is permits. probably the same. New York is probably yeah, the same. Yeah, exactly. That's why we have had problem when we fly to New York because there, New York had very... The gun laws here are very, the, the, the permissions here are very different from Los Angeles. So yeah. it's always, you have to schedule all the time. In places like Texas, people can open carry. They can actually carry a gun on the outside of their belt. And as long as it's in plain view, it's an open carry yeah. state. And so. But yeah, but I'm not, the, I'm not allowed. But I always have a safety box next to the bed where the bodyguards had. Yeah. Because they need to have a gun in the safety box. Yeah. So and I will have the the, the the code to the safety box. So if something happened, yeah, I can open a safety box, protect myself for self defense. When we are out, they always carrying two or three guns, so yeah. they always can pass one, so I can protect protect myself because then it's self defense. Yeah, exactly. And my Swedish bodyguard, uh, uh, who is a she, so and uh, she's been uh, in 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 the US and uh, this summer and. Uh, She's um, or she's not allowed to carry a gun, so that's why they always have an extra to her. If yeah. something's happened, she because she have a gun permit in Sweden, but she can't use it in here. So it's uh, yeah, it's, it was literally complicated things with these gun laws, but 
it so is what it is. Once you spend a little bit of time with your attorneys and with the, you know, the publicity people and you kind of map out how you want to roll this out, let's talk again and let's kind of dig into more of the details. And in the meantime, I will put a link down in the notes and you guys can read the complaint and you can also read the press release if anybody yeah. is interested in this case. Yeah, I will have the first to come it has been so much the last couple of days, so I haven't thought about this me yeah. just being. But I will tomorrow. They, they told me that they have. Uh, we're going to start doing interviews. So this is uh, okay. This is the first one. Okay. Well, perfect. Thank you so much for interviewing. Yeah, with thank me. you. Thank you so much, and uh, yeah, thank you again for your brave uh, no actions in in Los Angeles. It was very, very kind for. I was happy to help. Thank you. Have Take a, care, my friend. Have a great Take care. Night. All right. Bye now. Thank you.